As we reach this point in Matthew's Gospel, it comes after Jesus has given insight as to his real person and that mission at Caesarea Philippi. The Matthean account goes on to show how he began to share with his special band of disciples what will happen to him. So I'm reading today from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through to verse 28. Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will find it. God, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus had agreed and admitted to being the long-awaited Messiah. That's what precedes this passage, and we find it in Jesus declaring uh, that he was uh, the Messiah and Peter confessing openly who he is. Remember, Simon Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He told the disciples that they were not to speak about this to others. Now, it was very difficult for them to do this. We see many examples of how they couldn't resist talking about it. But he did say in verse 20, then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Jesus went on to teach that his suffering and death were absolutely necessary and that Peter seems to understand this more than anybody else. His Pentecost sermon in Acts 2, which is a, a, such a fantastic chapter in our Bibles, shows he believed it was necessary to fulfil God's purpose. We see it in Acts 2, 23. This is a picture of Jesus here in this passage, truly calling his first disciples to renounce themselves and to be obedient to his kingdom. It's a gospel motive again and again. Leave and find. Lay hold of that which is ahead by letting go of what is behind. The true life of a disciple enables a person when living close to him to enjoy the fullness of life. Following will reap a great reward, whatever that might mean. And the true disciple will experience glory. That's the great promise that he makes. Truly, I tell you, there will be some here that will experience that glory. Can you imagine what that must have been like to listen to Jesus talking in that way, especially as he's been talking about suffering? Thomas a. Kempis, which was such a, an inspiration to John Wesley through his marvellous book, uh, The Imitation uh, of Christ, writes in this way, everyone wants to rejoice with Jesus. Few are willing to bear anything for him. And that same challenge is there for us. If we're going to follow Jesus, are we prepared to take up the cross and follow with all the implications and ramifications in our lives that that might be? We may not all die physically, but if you're really going to be a disciple, there will be a cost to it, a cost that is real. And it's very interesting that dying to self and being raised to the new life in Christ becomes the heart of the message. The message is communicated in baptism, in trust and in faith. It's the message of what it means to be a real disciple. Not just, I'm one of the mates, I'm in the band, but I'm prepared to live with him, with all the implications of that day by day. So, as Jesus predicts his death, he makes and puts down the challenge to the disciples. He does the same for me, and he does the same for you. Are you prepared to pick up the cross and follow him? Are you prepared to count the cost, or whatever that may mean in your life?